Hello, 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 hello from San Giovanni Rotondo. Hello from San Giovanni Rotondo. I am Brady White, your host. Welcome. I hope that you will enjoy the episodes I have chosen. So, let us sit back, relax, and enjoy. Uh, well, people, today I have a special guest, and uh, this is Father Anthony. I met Father Anthony just a few weeks ago when I returned back to San Giovanni Rotondo. And in the short time that I have um, spoken with him and watched him do his work, I feel and I know that he is truly a Capuchin with great spirit uh, and wanting to serve our Lord. Father Anthony, hello. Hello. What is your full name, Father? I am Father Anthony Suresh Kumar Partipan. And when you are in the, the order, do you call, are you called Father Anthony from so-and-so, or are you called Father Anthony? I'm called Suresh, an Indian name. Oh, what does it mean, Father? Uh, Suresh, it means uh, a sun, a light. It means the and people, you see the smile on him. Yeah. There is the light coming through. Like I say, he, I could see that inner spirit, um, a very beautiful spirit. Well, Father, let's begin uh, when you were young. Where are you from? You are from India. Yes. And what part of India, the name of the town or state? Okay. I am from India, the southern part of India, a state called Tamil Nadu. Tamil Nadu is a place uh, the people speak a language called Tamil. Oh? A Tamil is a language, a very, very old language, very, very ancient language, as that of uh, uh, Latin. Because this language has got um, a grammar of 2,000 years ago. It is from uh, 2,000 years, the grammar is yes. from the 2,000 years ago. Yes. And did you say there is a connection with Latin? Yes. This is, uh, they say, according to the history, it is before Latin. Before it Latin. is before Latin. Latin. Very interesting. Because it's an ancient language. It is a language of Tamils. And this language is spoken in different parts of the world, especially this language is the official language of Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka. Singapore, and Malaysia. Sri they accepted it as an official language. Father, um, you speak such clear and beautiful English. Uh, were you schooled or in India? I think many, many people speak uh, English. Uh, is this the case with you? From the time you were little, uh, did you speak English? No, actually to tell the fact, I am coming from a very, very poor background. Uh, my village is a very, very poor village where poor people are living, a downtown of people are living. I am the first one in my village who became priest, who uh, began to come to Italy to study. My father, Mr. Fartifan, is an uneducated man. My mother, Kani Kameri, is an another uneducated woman who do not know even to read and write. What a truthful um, statement, Father. Um, coming from such a background and then rising to this, uh, where did the calling of the priesthood, how did it come about? When did you first want to, or when did you think of becoming a religious? Yes, actually, I didn't have this intention of becoming a priest because my family is a, a very, very poor family. My mother actually do not want me to become a priest. She wanted me to become a teacher and to serve and to get some money to educate my brother, my sister. But in a way, God's call came to me. When I received a letter from my vocation promoter, 
just my mother hit the letter in the Bible where I don't go and read at all. But later on, I happened to read. I actually started my studies as a teacher. In between, I had a little uh, a time of uh, pass. I returned home because I was not happy in the teacher training institute. Oh, Father, so do I understand you were a teacher before yes. you became yes. a, a Capuchin? Yes. Interesting, okay. I and was not that happy to be a teacher because there is something pricking in my heart. I want to become a priest. I want to become a priest. That was the thing that was pricking me. So I came home. My mother was very angry and she was not at all happy. But by God's grace, I happened to open the Bible. There I found the letter. I ran to the Capuchins. It was meant to be. Yes. It was the calling that was too hard yes. to ignore. Yes. Okay now, Father, um, about what age is this? Are you in your 20s at that time? Were you a teenager? About I what was, age? When I entered into the order, I was 18 years old. You entered into the order at 18? 18. 18 years old. Well, you obviously, I mean, not to give you, you know, a crown, but you must be very intelligent to have been a teacher at such a young age and then to have the calling and enter. Yeah. Okay, so where was the seminary? In India or did you all leave and go out of the country to go to the seminary to become, to study? Uh, it is near to my place. Uh, our provincial aid is in Trichy. There I went for a... Uh, come and see program. We, uh, they conducted a program, then I entered into the order and I studied uh, different parts of uh, Tamil Nadu for my information. As the first time I received this habit, that was the greatest moment in my life. Greatest beautiful words, life. Father, beautiful words. When I, when I received this, none of my parents, relatives, none of them were with me. But I was alone to receive with my companions and I was the last person from my companions who received this habit. And it was a very joyous moment after one year of preparation, then I received this holy habit which Saint Francis used as a poor man and which many of them think this is an habit of the poor person. But today, this habit has a great, great value. The greatest amount of people in Tamil Nadu, when we go with this habit, people touch and kiss our feet. Wow. Uh, yesterday, just by coincidence, was we celebrated our Francis and the stigma. And so very good. Father, um, when we spoke, I asked you not to tell me a lot because I like always to have it new. What is your position in life? The things that you are working for, the things that you are trying to uh, help with and uh, to teach others. When you, when you finish your studies in Rome and going back to your country, what is it that you is in your heart that you are going to put out? Actually, to tell the fact, I, after completing my two years of uh, priesthood, that to tell, I just uh, before coming to Rome, I lost my mother. Uh, just a mother who encouraged me to become a priest when I had said my desire. Uh, later on, she, in the beginning she was not interested me to become a priest. But when she found that my call is really a worthy call, she allowed me, she encouraged me. Before my coming to Rome, I came on 28th of April. But I lost my mother 2011 on uh, February 12th. So when I came, I was really confused what to do because I was very much interested in studying canon law. From, this, uh, from the seminarian, I, I had a passion towards the word called canon law. So I, but I didn't know what it means canon law. But when I started studying theology, I had a great uh, uh, passion towards canon law. Then, I did my uh, dissertation of BTH paper on canon law with a, a very, very renowned scholar by name Y. Yudhiraj, one of the diocesan priests who encouraged me to study. But at the end, uh, to tell the fact, my province, none of them had studied liturgy. 
Nanatachi. Ah, yeah. okay. I am the first one who studies liturgy. You are the first of many things, my friend. Yes. Uh, uh, Father, may I just ask, here in Italy, when you're studying uh, liturgical or canon, when, when, whatever time it was, uh, what college or university in Rome were you at? Yeah. I came here to study in Rome in the college of uh, St. Anselm. St. Anselm. Ooh. Anselm. Yes. But what happened is, my heart is not so much towards St. Anselm. I had an opportunity to study in the university, uh, Pontificia University of Santa Croce. Oh, Santa Croce. Uh, oh, it is a prop. It is a property of the Opus Dei. Yes, Opus Dei. Yes, yes. Opus, Dei. Opus Dei. Yes. Actually, when I entered into that college, my heart really enjoyed, enjoyed, because this was the place my heart was searching for it. I feel that my heart really enjoyed the presence being in the Opus Dei, studying the liturgy among the Opus Dei. It was a really a beautiful moment. I learned many things and I had through this Opus Dei, I had a beautiful chance of working as an Aiutante Cerimoniere di Papa Francesco, Papa Benedetto XVI. And I still work as an Aiutante Cerimoniere di Papa Francesco. When I met him on, uh, on the feast of uh, 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 Peter and Paul, and it was a re really, really a joyful moment, and he encouraged me a lot. And the master of ceremony, Padre Guido Marini, and he had encouraged me a lot to do this service in Vatican. I really enjoy uh, serving there. My, the greatest intention is, many of us think that, Liturgy is the only thing that is uh, only in the altar. But actually, liturgy is not only remains in the altar. It has to come out. Liturgy is a life. Liturgy means we touch God, God touches us. So therefore, liturgy is not a one thing that is uh, only in the altar. We are celebrating in the liturgy the action of God. Each moment of our life. Yeah. Not only in the church, yeah. but out among our brothers yeah. and sisters. Yeah. That is action of God. What is the action of God we are performing during the liturgy? That is, Christ breaks himself. Christ breaks himself and gives to his people. So in the liturgy, that's what we are doing. And we are called to continue this Holy Mass. We are called to continue this Holy Mass even in the nook and corner of this world. So oh, they repeat, uh, 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 do, uh, when do we uh, do this? You said? During the Mass. During the Mass, mass. yes. Mass. What we are celebrating as a Mass? Mass is the action of God. Yes. What is that action? God is breaking and sharing. So therefore, Mass is a share. We are called, we are invited to share. So the breaking of the bread yeah. I, I, as a symbolic. Yeah. Okay, Father? For again, for again to tell that, when we celebrate Mass, the concluding, we say, go and celebrate what you have celebrated here. So the Mass is not complete, uh, go in the peace of, uh, peace of Christ. It continues in every part of your life. Therefore, I understand a liturgy is an action of Christ. What is the action of Christ? Action of Christ is the Mass. The Mass is a sharing. So therefore, I want to give to the people because many of us think a liturgy is the one and the liturgist or the people are relatively strict, are very much uh, uh, acquainted only with the rituals. Sometimes my brothers used automatic to, uh, uh, reaction. Yeah. Mm. Sometimes my brothers used to fool at me. What is the difference between a liturgist and a terrorist? I used to say, I don't know what it means, but they say a terrorist is a person can be convinced, but liturgist are the people cannot be convinced. Because many a times those who have studied with liturgy they want to keep the rubrics very strictly. 
But my way of looking at liturgy is, liturgy is a life. Therefore, we need to adapt in every situation. So, the canon law, the final canon law says that our actions, our faith must help the people to save their souls. So, therefore, whatever help the people to save their souls, we need to do. We need to explain through liturgy. That is my, one of my desire. And I would like to uh, transmit this knowledge of liturgy in the way of a Franciscan perspective. Franciscan perspective, that is my way of And now, still I'm uh, doing a book on Mass. You in are English. doing a, a book on Mass in English? Yes. A book on English, uh, in English, yes. about Mass. Is one of my professors is helping me to do that book. So far, I have not completed, still I am going on. I hope that the book will help me to explain what I have studied, what I am deciding to give to people. Father, uh, beautiful ideas, beautiful uh, origin, the whole thing, Father. Uh, and I must say that uh, even when you speak, uh, uh, Padre Peel, uh, the idea of the liturgy was the, the saving of souls. He spent hours and hours and hours in the confessional. His purpose in life was obviously to suffer along with Christ, yes. but to save the souls. And you, a Capuchin, yeah. uh, you are, truly, when you Capuchins call one another brothers, you truly are. You are a brother with Padre Peel. And uh, you're young, and here in the photo, just over your shoulder, is Padre Peel uh, looking at you with being in San Giovanni Rotondo now, Father, uh, before we close. Uh, do you feel the presence of Padre Peel? And when was the first time you heard the name Padre Peel? Yeah. Okay. Well, the first time I heard the name Padre Pio, so we call it in my language, Padre Pio, as Kaya Patta Mudal Guru. Kaya Patta Mudal Guru. It's a language uh, called Tamil. Kaya Patta Mudal Guru. Uh, it, uh, means a priest who received the wounds. The priest who received. Because I read a book on Pio Kaya Patta Mudal Guru. Were you a student or a priest at this time? Again, I about was only a novice at the time. You were a novice. Okay, Father, good. That's all I wanted to get to. It was okay. 2000. When I received this news, I was really f uh, fascinated very much. And I went on reading that, and which I liked in him is saving the souls through confession. And I, these days, try my best to do something what he did. So in that, I understand him. His mission was suffering. Through suffering, he started preaching. There are so many people like Teresa of Avila and the trace of sight Jesus. All these people suffered. They have not went around to preach. Rather they suffered inside and their suffering transmitted and there were so many people converted. So therefore I look at Padre Pio as a suffering servant who suffered for preaching the word of God through reconciliation, through uh, pain and suffering. And the Mass, Father? Yes, especially when he celebrates Mass. I find him that every word he pronounced, he wanted to bring heaven into the earth. I remember at this venture, a quotation given by one of my friends, one sister, a Clooney sister called Judith Fernandez. She said, Father Suresh, Father Anton, whenever, whenever you celebrate, you are bringing Jesus on the altar. So therefore, I request you to be Jesus in all time to all people. That's what Padre Pio did in his life. Actually, when I received all this message, I transmitted to my younger brother, Navin Kumar. 
And this a little young man has a lot of passion for Padre Pio. And he said, Anna, that is brother, I would like to build a little grotto in our village for Padre Pio. When I received this news from an young man, it was really a great thing for me. Because I never thought that the young people are attracted. But my brother is very much attracted. He never heard many things about Padre Pio. I just to share little things, but he had been very much fascinated. But when I came to Giovanni Rotondo... Is this your first time, Father, in San Giovanni? This is the first, uh, first, okay. first, okay. very first time. I had the desire, long time desire to come here. I had been trying, trying, trying many times after my coming to Rome. This is the first time that I am very much happy that I am staying in the place where Padre Pio walked. I am uh, eating in the place where Padre Pio ate. And I am standing and speaking in the place where Padre Pio sat. And I am uh, hearing confession in the church where Padre Pio did it. So really it's a great blessing. And to give this particular interview with you, uh, my dear friend, I'm really happy that I'm really uh, full of joy to express this. Uh, believe me, Father, the people watching Hello from San Giovanni Rotondo can see you are full of joy. I just want to uh, touch base on the, have you celebrated the Mass in the private chapel upstairs where Padre Pio celebrated Mass? Yes. Privately? You have? Yes. That Beautiful was the experience. Great, that is the greatest gift that I got in Giovanni Rotondo. It is when I first time entered and celebrated Mass in that place, I really uh, in the upstairs where two years Padre Pio suffered the and uh, not able to celebrate Mass for the public I just entered into the chapel first time when I celebrated really I felt the spirit that Padre Pio helped me when I knelt down when I uh, took the Holy Host the Jesus Christ and the wine I really felt the desire the pain what Padre Pio added. I really feel uh, thankful to the Capuchin Order and the Capuchin Order present in the Giovanni Rotondo which helps us all uh, to have this experience of my brother Padre Pio. I would call him my brother, my, my elder brother who gave us a beautiful path to undergo this particular way of life. And I always like to uh, make a color for the people that uh, watch Hello from San Giovanni Rotondo by either visiting the garden uh, outside, uh, inside a church, inside the cloister. And I always like to bring up little um, special facts. And as you well know, and I think it's always very special to me when I do attend Mass in that little chapel, that now with the plastic on the floor, uh, the plexiglass, let's call it, when you walk, when the priest walks on it, you hear, you hear the, uh, the, the creaking. But those creakings to me are uh, the sounds of Padre Pio moving about when he celebrated Mass. It really? truly is. Father, um, we have really spent a beautiful amount of time with you. Uh, you certainly are an example of what Padre Pio, what John Paul, what St. Francis, and Please just at least touch on Mother Teresa and the great work that she has done in your country yes. and around the world, never mind yes. your country, um, all throughout the world. A woman who is so beautiful, yeah. despite physical beauty, yes. the, from the inside she was so beautiful that even her features become yes. beautiful. Yes. And, and she, was she one that you watched as it or when you were younger that you heard of her and you admired her yes you did i had a beautiful experience to tell about mother Teresa. when i was a little boy i also studied in an orphanage so with me there were some students from the mother Teresa convent they were orphans at least i was I was able to have father and mother and brother and sister, but they didn't have anyone. 
So when the sisters used to come to visit those children, the sisters of Mother Teresa, when they used to come to meet those children, orphan children, I really felt I would have born an orphan because the love and concern that they showed towards those children. They take utmost care. They look at and they do the service for those little children like their own mommy, their own sister. So really I felt that I should have born as a, a orphan boy to receive such a love. So the Mother Teresa sisters in India, they do a lot of service, lot of service for especially the orphans, the poor men, the poor ladies who are downtrodden. Today we could see there are a lot of widows in India. They are all well taken care by the Mother Teresa sisters. And also, I remember a beautiful incident and I watched a video a clipping which I used to preach to so many sisters when I speak about uh, poverty. So I, I saw a beautiful video that in her carmen she sits in the corner uh, during the prayer in the floor. I just to make a, a beautiful narration of it saying that she every day should uh, sat in the chapel at the corner to show that she was a corner stone of charity. And I used to request the sisters while I preach rightly, let us be a corner stone of charity. Who is Christ who represented everything, who, whom we are supposed to represent. Mother Teresa did it. She remained as a corner stone, as a poor sister and heard the Mass, participated in Mass and she really represented the cornerstone Jesus Christ in our life. Father, what a beautiful moment to end our interview. The cornerstone, what a beautiful image that one can take from that. But before we do close, would you please, if you want to say um, a blessing to in your original language and then also in English, just to give us a blessing for those who are watching Hello from San Giovanni Rotundo. I'm so happy to give a blessing because I am very much blessed. I came from a very poor place called Tachabadi, a little village. Today I stand near to Pope. I'm able to talk to Pope Francis. So this is the, a gift the Lord gave me. So I would like to give and transmit this gift to you first in my language tongue. May Almighty God, the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit bless you, guide you, protect you. Amen. Amen. Father Anthony, God bless you and your mission in life. God bless you. Thank you very much. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Let us not forget our brothers and sisters during this time. Let us pray now the prayer that Padre Pio loved so very much, the Hail Mary. For all your intentions, please join me in the Hail Mary. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady of Grace, pray for us. St. Pio, pray for us. Now remember, even though I'm away, you can email us at Padre Pio Info at AOL.com. Again, Padre Pio Info at AOL.com. Until next time, goodbye, goodbye.